Now, may I request uh, Ms. Rushti to look at the financing challenges for the developers? Thank you, Balwant. A very good morning to all. Um, I think uh, a lot has been said on the business uh, risks that uh, renewable to renewable companies today are facing. And a direct fallout of this is, uh, you know, how much capital is really available to scale up this business. Uh, this becomes especially pertinent because renewable by its nature is a very capital intensive business and for every megawatt uh, you're adding, there is a four to six crores additional capital that is required uh, funded through debt and equity. So a lot of these business challenges have a direct bearing on the capital available. So I'm already seeing that the mood is shifting from positive to, I would say, positive skepticism. Uh, I wouldn't say that it has already gone into the range of, uh, uh, you know, uh, too high a risk, uh, but it's, it's, it's already going there. And I think uh, uh, it requires uh, a lot of effort from the side of all stakeholders, uh, whether it is developers, whether it is uh, DISCOMs, or whether it is regulators, uh, to ensure that uh, some of these risks uh, don't get blown uh, too large to affect the future growth potential of the sector. Having said that, uh, if I was to break the sources of capital into various sources and uh, share my thoughts on each one of them, uh, I think equity is gradually drying up. Uh, so the only two pure equity transactions that we've seen in the last nine months, and uh, I've had the benefit of having worked on both the transactions and those companies are here. So we have NG and we have Hero, uh, and these are the only two equity transactions, pure equity transactions that have actually happened in the last nine months, last three quarters. Uh, however, there's a lot of activity on MES, and this kind of gives you a sense of where the sector is going, that uh, you know, people, people think that there is potential in the sector, uh, there are returns to be made, but do they believe that the business can keep growing uh, and, you know, and create that delta in terms of EBITDA multiples? Uh, there is a bit of question mark on that, and which is why activity is gradually shifting towards uh, mezzanine <coughs> capital. Uh, so we've seen a lot of uh, MES capital from the likes of Piramal, GE, uh, today there was an article about uh, you know continuum raising some mes capital so so a lot of activity on mes is happening but the question remains that if this mes capital is available uh, even at let's say early teens uh, are the projects actually generating that kind of return so you know if one was to do back calculation at the 244 262 tariffs or 346 for wind uh, is is that return really there and will this mes ultimately get serviced or will this basically dig into some of the equity which is acting as a quasi security for the mezzanine capital. Uh, so, so I'm not sure till when is the mez capital also going to be available unless again some of the business risks uh, that you know TP, Balwant and Deepak spoke about get addressed. Uh, on uh, and you know both mez and equity they are basically being driven on the hope of a successful exit. Now isn't it a bit strange that India has still now not even seen a single IPO in the last few years uh, on the on the renewable side. So there are several companies that have already crossed the one gigawatt mark, uh, but they haven't seen IPO. So uh, a few years back when we were doing uh, transactions, 500 megawatts was a good size, then one gigawatt was a good size. And now people are already talking of, you know, three gigawatts, four gigawatts for going into an IPO. Uh, so that also gives you a sense of what is happening in terms of exits. Uh, in the sector. Uh, so it's it's kind of strange that you're seeing a lot of EPC companies IPOing, uh, uh, but you're not seeing any renewable companies which have 25 year cash flows visibility uh, going into that market for capital. Uh, another potential route of exit is mergers, but unfortunately uh, a lot has been talked, a lot has been tried, but no mergers have seen uh, actually materialize. Uh, so for example, uh, you know, the OGPL merger or uh, the talked about uh, orange, uh, uh, Green Co, uh, sorry, Orange and uh, Renew uh, merger, they've also not happened. So, so I think the sector does need to see some real exits uh, to actually again start being of interest to uh, pure play equity uh, investors. On the debt side, I think TP, you touched briefly and I, I agree with you that uh, bankers uh, are already skeptical <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, they're drawing a lot of comfort from who is the sponsor in the project. So. Uh, you know, pure play, non-recourse funding is not available in India, unfortunately. Uh, there is always a shortfall support that the sponsors have to sign up to. And uh, despite that, we are seeing a lot of projects struggling to reach uh, financial closure. So all in all, I think uh, because of the business risks, there is a direct uh, uh, impact on the financing that is available. 
uh, having said that mm -hmm. and having given you all the skeptical statements, the positive is that deals are still happening. Uh, so like I said, we've, we've concluded two deals in the last nine months uh, on the equity side and many more on the mess side. Uh, so deals are happening and it's very important uh, that when we are approaching investors, there is a right business case that is put in place. Uh, there is there is <coughs> a path to exit uh, and the quality of projects that have already been put in place has a lot to say about the credentials and uh, the implementation possibility of the business plan. So those are some of my thoughts on financing. That's very interesting. In fact, I'm glad to know that there are some still some deals are happening and uh, capital is being raised. Uh, now may I request Mr. Kiran Patil to present his views. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm from PLG Clean Energy. Uh, I formed this PLG Clean Energy in October 2014 along with uh, Mr. Puneet Goel. Um, after I worked with uh, Ecolutions, uh, Renewable Energy uh, Equity Investment Company for five years. Uh, Puneet had done uh, 20 megawatt of solar project and uh, he had sold it to somebody. Uh, so. Uh, in PLG now we have an investor, uh, Mrs. Rima Agarwal, uh, who is a serial tech entrepreneur. She has earned uh, maybe uh, uh, 20x of exited few of the investment. Uh, of course, uh, renewable energy is not going to give such type of um, returns. Uh, but in PLG, what we have done is we have got one more PE fund and uh, there is a backing. Well, another funding is behind us. Uh, so last uh, one, one and a half year, we are working on various projects. Uh, there, there was some tie up with uh, IPC company uh, and uh, some projects will be coming. Uh, we are invest interested in investing in operating assets also at this point, uh, solar and wind, uh, uh, greenfield, maybe a small pipeline. Uh, we are not interested in looking at open access or uh, uh, where there is no government PPA. So that's our investment strategy. Uh, apart from this uh, renewable energy, we are investing in, uh, we have invested in super capacitors. Uh, so that factory will get operational in Pune in January 2018. Uh, then we are, we have invested in one of our innovative solar technology. There is a lot of trial and error is happening in that particular technology. Maybe we are looking at uh, um, uh, cost of uh, power at a lesser than what uh, industry is offering at this particular point with this particular technology. Uh, so th these are the few things that we are doing. Uh, uh, we are we are working on this uh, uh, checking about operating assets, and then what we are noticing is uh, those operating assets which are available in the market for last two three years. Again, quality is a big issue. Uh, <coughs> having done. 128 megawatt in Germany in 2011. So my mindset is to look at the quality and um, uh, that's one of the key criteria where uh, we are failing to get a uh, few good deals, but obviously we are hopeful of getting few more projects. Um, and then uh, in this Greenfield project, um, maybe within next two, three months, we will be starting one of the projects. So we are working on the quality standards. And my personal belief is until and unless whatever size of the project we do, uh, we should do a quality standards. Maybe panel is a big issue. Uh, I'm in constant touch with DuPont guys who are doing something on CSR activities. With them, we have uh, analyzed what are the issues with Indian panels, um, Indian projects, and then the panels, then uh, back sheets, all those minor and major issues we are trying to address when, as and when we move forward on this particular aspect. So coming back again, um, uh, having a backing from uh, an investor and a PE fund, uh, we, are, we are struggling and we are really baffled, I must mention this thing, okay, what is happening on this thing? Because we can't compete at this 2.6 or 2.7 because cost of fund is on a liter on a higher side. So we are just observing, watching, and then uh, 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 waiting for this dust to get settled, and then again compete with all those big boys uh, sitting here. Maybe God willing that that should happen with us. And uh, uh, we are we are looking for these projects uh, where the there is a written expectation from from back to back from investor then P fund. So uh, hopefully we will be able to uh, match all those things. And parallelly, what I believe is, apart from uh, this 
uh, standalone renewable energy, there should be something that is coming in, uh, say, solar plus energy storage, wind plus energy storage. That's the area one of uh, area of interest to us. Also, we are talking with a few of the energy storage companies. Maybe at right point, we will have some tie-ups and then we will compete with those projects also. So coming back um, to issues, uh, in my case, uh, one of uh, the quality of the equipment, quality of the panels, that is one of the issue that I, uh, I want to address. And then second thing is the cost. So uh, that is beyond our control at this point, but we are just observing and then I think this macroeconomics will give us that opportunity to be in the market and then do some, uh, some more megawatts. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Patil. I think the issues that you have raised about the quality of the projects is very, very pertinent. And uh, at the kind of prices that we are getting in the market, it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to maintain the kind of quality that is required. Uh, may I request Mr. Randy Bora now to uh, present his views? Good morning, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to the organizers for giving uh, Cleanmax to speak about specifically on the rooftop side of it. We are all primarily discussing the challenges in the sector. Uh, as you might be aware, Cleanmax is uh, one of the largest uh, rooftop developer in the country, and we have roughly around uh, 100 megawatt plus of rooftop capacities installed pan India. And then uh, also we are into the, like the open access side of it on the, on the third party sale, we are executing roughly around uh, maybe around 200 plus megawatt of uh, projects uh, this year. So that's our prime pro portfolio and we are uh, based across five, five offices uh, in India and uh, we are very strong with our uh, we do have our own engineering and procurement and all the uh, all the te team in house and we have a, a substantial uh, good leadership uh, and have been have been well financed uh, as well so uh, coming to the uh, challenges I, I will talk specifically on uh, rooftop side of it uh, as we all know that uh, rooftop uh, has grown and there is a lot of uh, hope that the industry is slightly more better place vis-a-vis -vis the ground mounted side of it and more and more developers are, are coming into the segment to invest into the rooftop side of it, hoping that the tariffs are slightly better. But as we go along, the challenges have also cropped into the se sector, and we have seen of late in the last uh, couple of uh, SECI bids which have happened, the prices, the numbers have been pretty tough. For example, uh, for a state like uh, uh, Punjab, uh, where the radiation levels are not that great, we have seen a tariff of around 3.15, uh, we, we, even with subsidy and uh, even with subsidy of around around 25 percent subsidy which the government is giving i think those kind of tariffs are pretty low uh we are still to see whether whether those projects are actually getting commissioned or not but as we go along we we see that uh, this sector rooftop segment is also getting slightly constrained with the incoming competition throughout and uh, we feel that yeah it, it the, the potential is huge because today, uh, where we lie is we have just done maybe around one, one gigawatt, maybe 1.5 gigawatt of rooftop. Uh, however, the government targets are maybe around 40 gigawatt, which is way far. And we expect that even if we do half of it, we will be good enough. But, uh, uh, but, but see, and, and we know that the potential is there. Uh, I'll, I'll just talk a couple of examples on the potential maybe. Uh, maybe, for example, the smart cities. For example, government has announced the smart cities. There are roughly 98 smart cities which the government want to intend, intend to do. And each of these smart cities have a potential of, say, around, uh, the, the, the power requirement is around 1,500 million units, uh, roughly. Uh, and, then, and then you have to do around 10% of those numbers through renewables which is around, uh, which will correlate to some, somewhere in the range of around 100 megawatt of uh, renewable projects. Even if we take uh, the government buildings or the residential side of it, we feel that maybe around 30-40% can be done through solar. So the potential only in the cities itself is uh, maybe 500 to 700 megawatt in the coming two, three, four years. So, so the potential is there. So, so the challenge that we see is that, that uh, the information percolation down to the uh, the people who implement these projects uh, lack a bit. Uh, our experience has been pretty tough. Uh, we have done roughly more than around 15, 15 to 20 megawatt of projects in government buildings, 
And we have seen that uh, even after signing a PPA, the, after when I, when I start my start billing cycle, people question me, oh, you are billing me at six rupees. I, am I supposed to pay as well? So when he signed the PPA, he, he, he was ever not ever even aware that he has to pay me as well after the, after the plot is commissioned. So, so, uh, so what, why they are doing it? So, so it's purely in the government, at least uh, we have seen it's, it's purely by force. And it's no, they are not bothered about savings. It's primarily driven by uh, instruction from the higher management or the officials or the ministries that there is a mandate to do solar, we have to do it. So, so the, w the challenge that we see is that uh, uh, the right information doesn't flow to the, the people uh, below. Uh, that 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 that, they, that is across uh, the segment. Whether it's the uh, end users, whether it's the discoms, or whether it's the CIG clearances, as Mr. Balwanjoshi mentioned, all the bottlenecks lie lie with the capacity building. I I think that's a key challenge uh, in the sector. Where where uh, although we have targets, all, although we have uh, uh, talks at at all state level and central level, the information to the right people have not been flowing throughout. So we need to really. Uh, have a system where, although uh, th that we educate them in a, in a sense that uh, the right uh, people can uh, make their uh, ch make ch changes in the way way do they, do they deal with the renewable energy projects, and then they implement that at the ground level. Without their support, uh, the segment uh, will not grow at the pace we intend to. Uh, rooftop per se is de primarily dependent on the net metering policies. Net metering policy we know all know all the states have notified it. It's almost a uh, law, and uh, and they are kind of uh, implementing in most of the states. But however, uh, there are a lot of delays in the entire process. So with the delays, we are de we are stuck. We are not able to build the prop, uh, customers. We are ha suffering losses in terms of since, for, for example, a, a, a typical project in Delhi takes uh, maybe around a month, month and a half. That's the fastest that we can deal with in getting a net metering connection. However, for example, in UP or for example, uh, any other states, Maharashtra or Tamil Nadu, it may, it may be anywhere between th six months to one year to get an exact net metering connection done. So, so with those kind of challenges, it's very difficult for us that uh, we can uh, move faster. We need to move fast uh, so that we can achieve targets, but then these bottlenecks have to be taken away. Uh, on the private side of it, uh, business has been doing fine because the tariffs have anyways come down How, uh, and, and the industrial tariffs are pretty high. Uh, there also the challenge is different. It's different in the sense that uh, today we, we the, the main the primary developers are looking at customers which are like A AAA rated companies. What about the B? B? There are a lot of lot of there's a huge chunk of industrial customers which are maybe in the next 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 level where which which they are willing to uh, use uh, give us their rules but they are not maybe creditworthy for the banks to finance so how are we going to cater to uh, those kind of customers maybe, maybe not in this year maybe next year in coming years if we intend to do rooftop at a major larger scale we also need to uh, cater to those uh, big b or triple b rated customers as well and we need to find out a solution through various mechanisms or or maybe consultation with the banks how how do we address to those customers and the third segment, which has been lagging far behind, is the residential side of it. The residential side, the challenges are that uh, for a resco company like CleanMax, it's fundamentally not feasible for us to invest into one or two kilowatt of rooftop projects and then and get the money back from them for it on a long-term PPA basis. So, so how do we deal with it? So it has to be the discoms who, ha who has to tie up with the uh, developers, maybe have a have a uh, mechanism where. Discoms ensure that the payment uh, payments are being ensured to the developers, or or some kind of a mechanism has to be worked out in the coming years, so that the uh, roof uh, th those those customers, which is like the residential societies of Noida, Ghaziabad, the entire uh, NCR itself has so many residential societies, but nobody has trapped those. Everybody has maybe around 200, 300 kilo kilowatt of potential in the common sp common space, but those have not been trapped. So, uh, as a rooftop developer, we feel that there are a lot of challenges, and uh, and and to address them, it has to be a holistic approach, uh, where where the uh, and the, and the, and the key to this is the sustainability of the discounts for sure, and and where where we developers can partner them, and 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 the solar developers are not taken as a competitor to the. Uh, uh, there has to be some mechanism where uh, discounts are also in incentivized to uh, implement solar in a bigger way so that we can like uh, grow uh, in a larger way, yeah.
thank you to the makers uh, thank you randeep uh, that's uh, quite an excellent uh, presentation on the challenges faced by the rooftop sector uh, may i now request mr pradeep chauhan to present the challenges faced by him while developing the projects thank you thank you mr balunt and good morning to all uh, as talk about a uh, few minutes on uh, my company solar pack uh, i recently joined in october most of you must have seen me um, earlier in my previous organization or in some of the conferences so this company solar pack uh, is um, solar pv developer based in spain uh, they is they founded the company in 2005 they have been developing projects uh, in european region then they ventured into latin american countries developed project in those uh, territories 2015 they entered into india uh, uh, developing uh, solar assets and uh, they have been awarded 100 megawatt pps in state uh, tender telangana and now the projects are uh, almost commissioned so um, uh, solar pack is uh, uh, overseas developer venturing into india and of course now facing challenges uh, something about me i uh, i came from a distribution company background distribution transmission company background uh, 2003 i passed out uh, from one of the premier, uh, engineering college electricity act was just passed by the parliament i said wow that's the right time to enter into private distribution company i think privatization going to happen take off and indian power sector is going to now uh, improve there will be a lot of improvements there will be a lot of scopes a um, lot of private investment will come into uh, power distribution and transmission sector it's going to up be a good good uh, learning growth yes saw the challenges once i entered into the power sector 2007 8 i started putting up small small rooftops uh, kilowatt solar uh, systems story same story net metering connectivity electrical inspector clearances what is about ac dc ratio nobody understand that time nobody understand this time same story so uh, i happen to do a lot of uh, rooftop projects for uh, for mnri uh, on on pilot project basis to uh, set up the project provide them data provide them uh, inputs give them analysis uh, provide them feedback Uh, from the operating asset side operating company side and on improvements in the ic standards develop a lot of drafts for uh, state policies state net meeting policies for for mnri uh, 2010 2010 was the time when jnsm happened i said wow that's the right time for you know for for solar industry to grow up yes there has been improvements there has been uh, developments but a uh, story on the other side of the developers table is you have electrical inspections you have uh, state node agencies you have distribution company you have transmission companies and you have land acquisitions you have state or uh, government authorities to take approval clearances for setting up a project a greenfield project so uh, what my experience says since solar uh, about 10 years now is there are different challenges in rooftop there are different challenges in uh, state uh, tender projects and of course there are very huge challenges in uh, central tender also yes there are better payment securities but challenges are very very different in each of the segment if you talk about open access and the private customer market there are different very very different challenges so let me start with the challenges which a general customer or a developer face when uh, he uh, go for a rooftop project 
So uh, I have my friend here from CleanMax. They they do a lot of uh, projects in rooftop. So rooftop customer for first you have to find a customer. To find a customer, uh, you have options of uh, uh, there is a portal of uh, MNRE called Spin, and there are other uh, tenders wherein you can um, bid for subsidy outreach to a customer. Customer will think, oh, I'm getting a system for free. I don't have to pay, right? Then you have to take state note agency approvals for setting up the project under any of the scheme. State note agencies are still not ready for, uh, for uh, approving those projects. You have different uh, standards. For rooftop, you have different standards for grid connected for uh, large utility scale projects. 10 kilowatt is very different than a megawatt. I mean, some customer don't understand what is radiation sensor, why it is required. Some customer will ask you to give a weather monitoring station what, what it means doesn't understand. So, <clears throat> Electrical inspector clearance is for what? I, because I have worked in that environment for very, very long. It, it is just for the safety of the system equipment and the premises. What is net meter? Net meter is just a bi-directional meter. It is the same meter, same specifications. I understand if you have to put an additional cable, additional transformer, yes then there has to be a, a approval process which is yes significantly long i mean you have to put up the meter which is, which is, which can record in both the directions that's it the current flow from the same cable back to the transformer back to the grid why there is so much of fuss distribution company uh, engineers doesn't understand the same transformer can step down same transformer can step up it's a very very simple thing in in other developing countries uh, where you know there are a lot of rooftops has happened they'd never go and you know buy a meter just for the solar system it is already there and the distribution company, uh, the standard specifications are, it has to be by direction by default. Customer has to just put up the solar system and online apply for uh, approval for uh, equivalent kilowatt size. And that's it. Whenever the, the next billing happen and meter records both, both side power flow, energy flow and, and there is a accumulated readings has to be netted off, that's it. In India, whoa, whoa. we have to buy a meter, we have to go to the testing lab, we have to uh, get the meter installed ourselves, I mean, as a developer. Such a big task, getting a net meter done, and it's very, very simple thing. There are few states which have very good process. You can get a net meter done in five days, 10 days. Some of the state you might have to wait for five, six months. This is just because uh, you know, their, their policies, their programs, and there are investment you know, invitations and a lot of invest, uh, investors are uh, walking around. But there is very, very little efforts on educating the distribution companies, guys, transmission company guys, state node uh, agencies, very, very little effort. So um, one of my suggestion, I have always been advocating for, you know, educating the other side of the business stakeholder, which is very, very important, be it solar park agency, be it transmission, distribution, electrical inspector, or anybody Mr. else. Chahan. Whosoever is involved, yeah. whosoever is involved in uh, you know development of be it rooftop, be it uh, any scale project, yes, as an industry we should educate each and every member, and then probably we'll be uh, putting lot less efforts in 
you know, executing the capacity and we will not be talking about even after 10 years of uh, uh, solar industry growing up, we still are talking about a lot of challenges on the other side of the table. So my uh, inputs all the time are we should involve each and every stakeholder of the industry and try and uh, educate people so that we things can move faster. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much.